Lubu is an amazing warrior, and really that's all he cares about. He yeah. just want to fight. Yeah. He doesn't want to wage war. He literally just want to fight. Yeah. And uh, that reflects in his mechanics. Lubu's campaign is very mechanics focused. One of his mechanics is chaotic rule, mm. because administration is a tedious task. Task fit only for eunuchs and weaklings. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the announced stream for Total War Three Kingdoms A World Betrayed. I almost said that right, but I caught myself at the last minute. Today we're going to talk about the entire DLC. We're going to talk about everything that's coming for free in the patch alongside it. We're going to talk about the free DLC. There's a lot to go through today and hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy everything we have on offer. Original start date was 190, Rise of the Warlords. 182 came with Mandate of Heaven. We are now in a World Betrayed 194. Now, Jacob, why is it called a World Betrayed? Well, one of the main reasons for, for, for the name is that between 190 and 194, and also around that period, a lot of crucial betrays happens that really escalate the entirety of the uh, civil war. Dong Shou's betrayal of the Emperor, Li Bao's betrayal of Sun Jian, which leads to his death, what we see in the trailer, but also like Lu Bu and his uh, like his like n numerous betrayals that happens in 192, 194, and 196. The title itself is of course lifted from the South South's famous quote: uh, "I would rather betray the world than have the world betrayed me." We have a completely new starting position here for almost for most of our uh, normal factions that we are familiar with from the other start dates. Sheng Yang is hanging out here in between Liu Bei and Lu Bu. Uh, we got Kong Rong and Yuan Shao, uh, sorry Yuan Shu and Yuan Shao. She's very exposed here. Yeah, she's um, she's very caught between a, a rock and several hard places. Yeah, this is a really interesting starting position. You're gonna have uh, you're gonna have to uh, fight tooth and nail to become a uh, bandit queen. Lu Bu is hanging out here. He is uh, um, one of the unique factions to the start date because. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, he was hanging out with Dong Zhou uh, until two years ago when he killed Dong Zhou. And then in history, he doesn't actually last um, that much longer. No, he, uh, he he's like one, one of the like, big ma major characters to, to die fairly early on in the story. And he dies in 199 by by being executed by Cao Cao. Then we have our free LC faction here in Yen Bayou, uh, starting down in the south. And we'll get into uh, all three of these new factions as uh, things go uh, along. If we go back to 190 for a second, we'll return to 190 after we've talked all about 194, but Yen Bayou is actually available in 190 as well. Mm. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a good free LC. That's 194, should we jump into Lu Bu? Turn one, we are in a very precarious situation. This uh, uh, Solomon here in Chen, we have Ying Xuan, and Cao Cao is bearing down on us. Lu Bu is an amazing warrior, and really, that's all he cares about. He yeah. just want to fight. Yeah. He doesn't want to wage war. He literally just want to fight. Yeah. And uh, that reflects in his mechanics. Lubeck's campaign is very mechanics focused. One of his mechanics is chaotic rule mm. because administration is a tedious tax task fit only for eunuchs and weaklings. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Lubu gets increased corruption all across his faction and increased construction cost and reduced administrators. Lubu starts at rank 9, mm. which is fantastic. Um, yeah. I have a very, very weird un uh, uh, army composition here because I literally just set this up so I could uh, um, show off things off. Um, I don't think you should have two strategists in your uh, armies, <laughs> but, uh, you know. So another of uh, Lubu's sort of fightiness mm. um, to bring in a, a, a word from Warhammer his fightiness is that he has a mechanic in the post battle called maintain momentum what is maintain momentum so like most other factions like whenever whenever they are like after a fight they have free choice between if they just want to ransom get the military supplies or just replenish some of the units Lupu has that unique option where he can replenish uh, a lot more units but he can. Uh, he also instantly gets back all of his movement points. So if you, you want to cross China in the fastest way possible, you, you, you're just going to go from battle to battle to battle, which will gain you a lot of momentum, mm. uh, which is a pooled resource yeah. uh, unique to Lu Bu. Momentum is a pooled resource that you can use in various ways. We're gonna talk about two of them. Yeah. So say that you have a general that you really need, mm. but he doesn't like you. Yeah. It's 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 just all bad. Yeah. It happens. What if, what if we just inspired loyalty? Oh, we yeah. spend one momentum, 
we gain uh, uh, 35 satisfaction for 10 turns and our relationship deepens. If you have a lot of it, you can go to any settlement that you are like having a, a, a war with mm. and like it could be a minor or big one and just instantly energy from the enemy. Whereas mm. they, like you've been winning a, a streak of battles and they, they see you co like coming out, like marching outside and they just open up the they gates, we, we surrender to up. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now there are, I think, five different ways to use momentum. Those are only two of them. It's easy early on, yeah. but in the mid to late game, it, like everybody starts mm. to attack you and like, start to gang up you yeah. on you. And there's a reason for that. Uh, Lubu has another pooled resource called Personal Victories. Personal Victories gives you various bonuses and penalties for mm. winning battles and killing uh, uh, ge uh, enemy generals. Yeah, it's just for, for defeating them. Like, and same with Momentum, is that they, they both work similar by Every, like for every enemy general that you defeat in a battle, you gain uh, one momentum point. But mm. at the same time, you also increase the amount of personal victories that Lupu has gained, which increases the like how much uh, like money he uh, he's getting after a battle. Mm. But it also starts to I to increase how much the other factions dislike you because yeah. they begin to fear you more. But also internally, your own uh, court members begin to have like they begin to fear you and suspect you, and they. Mm. And they like start to dislike you even more and more, and yeah. this is a, f a thing throughout his entire campaign. But he also increases his prestige, yes. so you can fairly, uh, if you just win battle after battle, battle very quickly, you can you can trigger the end game very quickly. In oh yeah, that's all there is to his personality, really. So you can you know you don't have to become a, a very wide emperor as long mm. as you can kill other people. Exactly, uh, which goes perfectly into our next mechanic for Lu Bu, which is. The Greatest Warriors. So the Greatest Warriors is a mechanic which uh, entices you to fight everyone in China. The mightiest warriors and, and like the mightiest strategist of this time period, which was just filled with them. Mm. And like, Lubu is known as the mightiest warrior in China. And he needs to prove that to a certain extent. What we have made it as a mechanic is that you have to go around and attack and defeat the uh, other major, uh, like major warriors of this time period. And by doing that, you gain bonuses. Cousins in arms is uh, one that I've completed, which is to defeat Zhao Dun and Zhao Yuan. Um, so we can see there, here that when I defeated Zhao Dun, I got melee evasion for my spear infantry. And then when I defeated Zhao Yuan, I got charge bonus uh, for shock and melee cavalry. Mm. But then because I've defeated both of them, I get an additional 15 prestige. Here's the scroll bar. This is how big it is. And it goes all the way down here. There's a lot of greatest warriors yeah. in China. But let's talk about the free stuff because we got a meaty free mm. patch to go mm. along with this. Let's start with the uh, the, the new way you uh, uh, help out or you manage people's satisfaction. Mm. So we've removed an old system. Yeah, we, we removed the old uh, rank system in the game. You will, uh, you will have the option to promote characters in your court, which usually cost a bunch of money, gave them a small satisfaction increase and Technically, it gave them a different title, but it was so small and, and it, it didn't make generic ca characters stand out. What we've instead done is replace it with the titles system. Yeah, the titles. It, it was a it was a very common thing throughout the book, but also at, at a time that before a, a, a person wa was about to go out and do a great deed, say, Sun Tzu was, was to go out and conquer the South for Yun Shu, he gave him the title of General who, who Annihilates Bandits and General who pacifies the South. 20 satisfaction, not great. Mm. We can offset that by giving him a title. Yeah. Now there's a lot of titles mm. here. But I'm thinking we're going to make him a master of writing. Yeah, that's, that's quite fitting. Um, which gives him an increased character salary, mm -hmm. but also increased cunning, satisfaction, character experience, and public order if he's an administrator. Yeah. Let's move into the big one. Do you know what my favorite uh, <laughs> my favorite group of people in, in uh, uh, Total War Three Kings is? Is it the, uh, is it the bandits? It's the bandits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they've been reworked. Oh, yeah, completely. Oh. But mm. let's start with uh, uh, the new research. They have their own new tech tree, which is works quite differently from the existing uh, uh, skill tree. Where instead of just living up certain things, you can, like, you have this giant map of China where yeah. 
where, 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 you, where you see all the criminal organizations of China, mm. the underworld of China. Like tribes or uh, bandit clans and so on. Yeah, but, but also corrupt officials mm. and the, like, the last remnants of the yellow turbans. The map is all white except for these three provinces here that are black. Maybe suspiciously that this is the same area here. Why are these tiles black? It's because that's the the areas where you have or you control at least one region in that area mm. and that is the whole idea is that you make you're making contact to the criminal organizations throughout china so if you have a region in that area where the banner organization is it's become easier for you to like get them to talk or, or like 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 get them into your organization in jianan we have the town and the lumber yard which gives us a plus 200% research rate to this tech that is in here. And something really interesting with this tech tree is that um, bandits can now pick up units that were previously mm. unique to other factions. But if we were going all the way up, come on, uh, it's, uh, it's there. All the way up to the Black Mountains, we can actually pick up uh, Zhang Yan's uh, Black, Ra uh, Black Mountain Raiders. And you can do that with a ton, like yellow turbans. Uh, uh, like like, it, like most of the Han units, uh, yeah. you can get into it, and, and that's the the new thing with the banners is that they, they have a new set of uh, like standing units yeah. that are cheaper and mm. have a lower maintenance, yeah. but they are they have a very 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 bad morale and are like like they're always raiding. Yeah, and they and like and the whole the, the other thing is that you can only get like a certain amount of these new units, so. Being able to research fast is quite essential for yeah. for survival. Let's move on to settlements. We have a lot of available things to build here, but this interface looks a little bit different than normal. Yeah, yeah it does. What, what, what is this right here? Oh, that's a that's a little bandit building. That's a little bandit building. Bandits get uh, sort of undercover sec secrets-ish buildings that are mm. only available to bandits, and mm. they are only available in minor settlements. Because here's the thing, bandits don't really they don't want the spotlight in the same way that uh normal warlords want mm. you can pick up major settlements yeah but if you pick up too many you're gonna start seeing uh negative def effects and you don't actually get any prestige let's uh let's move into uh raiding and looting a new thing for bandits is that they don't use military supplies yeah they use loot our current level of loot gives us prestige but also reduced uh, campaign movement range. Yeah, because uh, you have you have too much loot on you, so yeah. so your so your soldiers are quite satisfied. They have like they have, they have been out plundering, and mm. now they just, they just want to relax. We have to yeah. have the money. There's actually a mechanic where if you are low loot, mm. your units will fight better. Yeah, yeah, because they 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 they, they have the money, and they like they, they know if if they don't soon get some uh, money or some food, mm. they will. They will die that that desperate. Yeah. Loot is more than just military supplies, mm. like others. Um, you can spend loot. So yeah. uh, bandits have a new stance called sharing the spoils. Yeah. So we could enable it here and see we would lose a ton of loot, but we would gain extra income from banditry, which is a new form of income unique to bandits, mm -hmm. and also food, which also has uh, um, there is now banditry food. Which yeah. is different from normal food. Yeah, which, uh, is that the like the bandits weren't like centralized and organized, so they were usually just taking all the food to survive. Yeah. So that's why we included that in the game. That you, yeah. Yeah, because their their own food production buildings are terrible. The way you regain loot, even though we're regaining a very little bit, you can see that m minus five for being in friendly territory. Yep. If we move into the yellow turban awesome. rebellion here, mm. that increases. Yeah. We're now just getting straight up eleven. Mm. Or we can start raiding, and that will get us a ton. So uh, it reduces a bunch of stuff, and it will start affecting public order in this uh, uh, in in Jianan. Yeah, yeah uh, like, like uh, for the enemy. Yeah, the uh, bandits make for for terrible neighbors. So we have our boy uh, uh, Yen Bayu here, mm. who he has uh, a beautiful pair of swords uh, that he starts with. He is the White Tiger. So his uh, faction mechanic is called the White Tiger Confederation, mm -hmm. which get, gets you a bunch of bonuses, uh, mostly to uh, uh, research, but also some recruitment cost, the, uh, uh, based on how many people are in your faction. So uh, you, 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 you mean coalition? Uh, sorry, in your coalition, not your faction. People in your coalition uh, will increase uh, uh, your White Tiger level, mm. your White Tiger Confederation level, which uh, gives you even more bonuses. 
and uh, uh, makes you a very uh, uh, strong opponent of Sun uh, Swansea. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, is it uh, like 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 standing right on your doorstep? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Look, I'm not doing great in this game. Our last bandit feature is the mercenary contract. So bandits, you know, they're they're not uh, 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 beholden to normal uh, rules of war. No. They're absolutely open to uh, fighting for money. If you are not playing as a bandit, you can offer a mercenary contract to bandit factions. Yeah, but but only if they are like, if they're being controlled by a player. It's a player oh, okay. focused only uh, treaty. So oh, okay. So Sorry. so as a bandit, you can offer your services to other factions, and by doing that, you get a bunch of money. Yeah. And you get a you get like a temporary ally for about twenty turns as you go out and, and fight their wars. Yeah. Which you know it's it's a very good way for expanding while being protected as mm, a bandit. Absolutely. And you have a pooled research called fame and fortune. Now, if you have at the end of your mercenary contract, if you have high fame and fortune, you will uh, uh, get extra bonuses. Yeah. From that. But if you if you hit zero. What happens? Yeah, if you ever hit zero with the mercenary contract, it instantly breaks, which uh, gives you a bunch of like treachery. It just a uh, penalty for, for breaking a contract, but you get an additional like failed uh, contract incident, which mm. I, I think gives you like minus fifteen diplomacy for like ten turns. I purposely accepted a very bad mercenary contract for me here <laughs> against Matung. Uh, for me to be able to gain uh, my fame and uh, fame and fortune. And not have this run out. I would have to be able to run over all the way over here and fight Matung, yeah. um, which I am not expecting to do before I run out. No, but but that's the thing. Like as you can do as a as a, as a mercenary, is that you know mm. you take the money, but if you do the job, you know. Yeah. You know, loyalty is a after contract. <laughs> <laughs> it's relative, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Another thing about the mercenary contract is that they are also available to Lu Bu. Yes. Lu Bu doesn't stop in finding ways to fight he can also become a mercenary mm. so that you uh, uh, so you can find even more like it doesn't matter that everyone hates you it doesn't matter that everyone's going to declare war on you probably no. it doesn't matter that you, uh, that you fight all the time find more ways to fight <laughs> there has also been updates to the spies yes yes they're like so, so you can finally extract your spy from the <laughs> enemy mm. It's a lo long way to feature. <laughs> yes. There is something that we call pre-battle spy extraction, mm -hmm. which basically means that if your spy is in a... Uh, uh, Enemy army, you've been able to infiltrate them. Yeah. You can actually... They will, uh, like, you, you get the option of either having them, like before you go into battle, like have them like retreat and like, go back to your character pool, or they can come in as a reinforcing army, mm. attacking the one that uh, you're about to attack yourself. Yeah. Another thing, we have sort of offensive assignments or foreign territory assignments. We have something here, for example, I'm only going to show this one, yeah. Scout Province. We have the weapons craftsmen in uh, Poyang, mm. but I can reveal all of Poyang with this one assignment. Mm. So you can spy on your enemies. And this is super y helpful for the bandits because they're going to not have all of the provinces mm. or all of the settlements in the commanderies. I have a note here that just says, it just says turncoats. <laughs> Please, take yeah. it away. So the, the turncoats is also a new thing for the, for the spy system where you can go, uh, I, I think you, 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 you need to go to the family tree and then see over all, all the factions. It will give you a little icon saying mm. there's a turncoat in this faction so you can approach them if you have like an, an an empty spice slot, and yeah. then they like give them a bunch of money and you know charm them, mm. and then they will become an 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 already existing spy mm. for you. That is all we're gonna talk about today. We haven't shown off everything mm. um, because let's uh, let's talk schedule for the next coming weeks because obviously when is it coming out? The 19th of March. 19th of March. So very Thank soon. You. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Jacob, for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> I will be back on Wednesday. Jacob, you will be back when, when you're back. Yeah. And uh, hopefully everyone everyone enjoyed this. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I read I read someone in chat said, if you don't know what you speak, then I, and then I started questioning what I was saying. <laughs> uh, let's take another look at that amazing trailer. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.